Okay, good morning. I hope uh, you're able to receive, uh, hear my voice. I think you got it uh, because now live streaming has started. So maybe I'll wait for another four minutes, then uh, we'll resume. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hello, good morning. Yeah, okay. So good morning. So it's 10 o'clock sharp and here we are. And uh, uh, as you know, we discussed uh, yesterday's uh, Topic we discussed uh, block four and we discussed unit nine. We discussed everything about typography and uh, today we'll. So we could discuss about one unit. Uh, it took the entire class uh, you know, to teach that one unit because it was technical in nature. And um, I hope you have gone through that. And uh, if you have not gone through, please go through the presentation. Uh, that will be easy for you to understand. And I'm sure. Uh, if you go through the presentation as well as my lecture, which is already there recorded. So anytime you can access it and then listen to it uh, while uh, also seeing the slides that I have exclusively prepared uh, for you only uh, so that uh, they are useful uh, to each one of you from examination point of view. So we will have a quick recap of what we tried to discuss. Uh, so we just tried to discuss a lot about typography. We discussed that you need to know uh, when you are in a PR department and when you're bringing out corporate publications, uh, it becomes uh, unavoidable for you to concentrate on this aspect. Uh, that is uh, 
how to use typography because text is equally important. Don't think that text is not important when you already have enough illustration or photographs. It's not as like that. They both go hand in hand and you will have what is known as a, a sort of a blend of these two. And so you cannot uh, uh, ignore uh, or neglect uh, either the text or the illustration. We'll bother about the illustration later, uh, but in production of, um, as I told you, we have come to unit block, uh, unit 10, um, uh, block four first, then we will go to block three after we finish block four. So today we'll try to see the next unit known as proofreading. But before that, a quick recap of what we discussed. We discussed about typography, what is exactly the definition of typography. We discussed some technical aspects also. We also discussed why we need to we need to know about typography. How does it help your publication to look elegant, convenient, easy to read, and attractive also? And how you can try to um, make that possible with the help of uh, uh, typography, which is nothing but the study of types or uh, the modern term for types is what is known as the famous one that's known as font. We also discussed about font. We discussed a lot about how it's uh, its um, definition also, its classification also. So everything, every, uh, you know, font has a complete set of size of, uh, complete set of characters belonging to one size and one face. That's what we discussed yesterday. And we also discussed that it is measured. And there's some way of measuring the, uh, the type size, when we say the type size, the letter that you see, whether it's headline or text or anything that you see, that the size of that particular letter can be measured in points. And we also discussed yesterday how these points came. They came uh, with the, from the point from the fact that you would just you have to buy heart uh, 72 points and they're in one inch. And we discussed that each point um, is when one inch is there, you break it into 72 equal parts. Each part is known as a point. And this is the smallest measurement that you can have uh, for small measurements like the size of the type or like the space between the lines, space between the columns, space between the paragraphs. So, or the initial space that you give, all these things can be measured with points. Sometimes we need bigger measurements like length of the line, length of the column, depth of the page or width of the page or the line length. All these things can also be measured with a bigger unit and that unit is nothing but pica, and we have derived it from points. Points are derived from inch. So pica is nothing but 12 points make one pica. So obviously 72 by 12, we have six picas for one m, for one m or pica. So six um, picas are there in one inch. This is what we discussed yesterday uh, while discussing the, the significance of uh, measuring the type. So next time when you talk to any colleague or anybody when, when you are talking about uh, production of a publication, the language that you use matters a lot because that is how you have to use the correct terminology. And then you will not say, use a big letter, use a small letter. You will say specifically use a 36 point font. You will say specifically whether you want it bold or italic or bold italic or all capitals or lowercase. This is what we discussed yesterday. We discussed a lot about typography and uh, we discussed uh, about the various parts of a letter itself. We discussed about what is serif and what is sans serif. Serif is the protrusion that you get at the end of the letter, whereas sans serif is one without. We say sa, it's actually sa in the word in French language, which means without. So we discussed a lot about this, and now uh, we discussed that all the fonts are classified into five uh, major uh, groups, uh, and we discussed the example of each. Uh, each group, we gave one very popular example that is already available in your system. Everyone's system, including your cell phone, you go open your Word, Microsoft Word, you will get all these fonts also. We discussed that. So what we are discussing typography, the same thing holds good even for not only for English publications, but for all language publications. So we have different fonts in Telugu also. We have different fonts in Devanagari different fonts in Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, and so on and so forth. So please remember we have all these things and uh, we now assume that you know uh, uh, adequately about how we select a font and why we select a font 
for a particular publication, for a particular piece of story. As I told you yesterday, I gave you the example of why we use all capitals, bold, tough uh, font, and like when we are talking about Mike Tyson, we can use that so that that appropriateness will be there. And I, I also told you, if you want to describe about the beauty of clever, or maybe of a heroine performance of your Lauren or Aishwarya Rao or anybody, you can try to make use of italic letters also, because italic are graceful, elegant, and delicate. So we are using uh, different fonts depending on the context of the content that you are having. This is very, very important for us so that um, you have uh, this kind of a situation. Okay, now we have the next one, what is known as proofreading. What do we mean by this? I will try to give you, let me first present the slides of this particular thing. Uh, what is known as uh, uh, slides of uh, the uh, presentation uh, of unit 10 of block 4 uh, in what is the, the headline of this unit is proofreading. So let me first share the screen. So I hope you are able to see. Yeah, I hope you are able to see the screen. Can someone confirm? I hope that you are seeing the screen. And uh, this is what we are having, you know, unit 10 proofreading. I assume that you are able to see the screen. This is the first slide that I have said. So what exactly is proofreading? Where do we get this word proof? Why do we say proof? So what exactly is that? See, so I mean, discuss the in typography. Uh, one aspect known as composing. That is, uh, how, do the, how does the text originate? So someone writes the text. Write means I am supposed a writer. Okay, and I write the text. And I may write with my manually, historically manually. Nowadays, nobody is writing. That's the thing. As you know, nowadays writing is becoming extinct, uh, you know, to a great extent because everybody is now has replaced writing uh, with what is known as typing. Directly they type into a computer's keyboard or they may just uh, type it. So what happens is that we enter the text, which we call it as data also. We enter the text through computer or I can even write. Uh, so we have many ways by which we get the text. Now when this text is uh, read carefully, uh, many people have a false notion that proofreading is a task which has now become redundant and which is now obsolete. Uh, I can say that to some extent, yes, but from my experience of having been in this field for over four decades, I can convince you or convincingly tell you that though this is being given a very casual uh, you know, approach, uh, you should know that ultimately uh, the document needs to be scrutinized. Anything, anything that you're going to print uh, needs to be very carefully checked, uh, even in spite of all kinds of checking that we have, like spell check, uh, where it checks the spelling mistakes and other things. So there is one task known as proofreading, as far as the text is concerned. So what is our aim? Is that in any publication, the aim of any PRO should be to ensure that his publication is error-free as far as the text is concerned. Not that you can have a mistake in illustration. That's a separate um, issue that we discuss separately. As far as the text is concerned, not a single mistake should be there. Uh, be it, uh, assuming that your editor and your editorial department has uh, seen the text, everything is edited, all the corrections carried out. But what happens is that uh, this, whether are those uh, is the text which we claim as error-free, is really error-free or not. So we do once more a thorough checking before we send it for printing, which is also a part of production of corporate publication. This is very, very important. Though it looks insignificant in the present day scenario because we have everything, now everything is computerized, digital. We are under the impression that we are able to have everything printed without any mistake. But as I said, uh, from my experience, unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm finding more mistakes uh, than I used to find in 1970s or even early 80s also. When the technology was very, 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 very outdated, 
no, completely manual, completely analog in nature. And uh, we used to have, but still, uh, the people uh, who were at the helm of affairs of this particular task were very, very meticulous, careful, sharp, smart, and they used to easily detect the mistakes also. So please remember, proofreading is one task which is done before the final clearance to go ahead with printing of the publication. So this is very, very essential. We call it as proof because uh, suppose I'm a printer, that is I'm a printing press fellow and I have a customer. Suppose you are a customer to me. That is you have given me some book to be printed. You are a PRO and you gave me one publication to be printed. So what I do, I you have given me everything, all the material like photographs you have given me, you have given me the text, either it is manuscript or type script or maybe a printout also you have given me. I ensure that I keyboard this text and then I what I do is I take out this in the form of pages, then I take a print of that. And then I read that very carefully. Read that whether I have typed correctly or are there any mistakes, be it typing. So lots of errors may or may not come when we start reading this. So this is the first sample of what I have typed comes out and that is known as a proof. This is the proof of what I have done, of what mistakes I have committed, of what mistake I need to carry out, I need to carry out the corrections and all those things. So proofreading is the art of detecting, detecting mistakes on proofs before publications. And then we also indicate there is a mistake here and this is what you should do to carry out or to remove that mistake or to correct, to carry out the required correction. Now a proofreader I is specially trained. You know, I have been here in this field for about 35 years I've been reading proofs I don't know how many thousands of pages I might have read. I don't even keep an account of how many pages I have read and this proofreading. So it is a completely a skill that you acquire over a period of time and you should be thorough in what you're trying to read, uh, particularly, especially when you say when you're reading an English proof, you should be thorough in your, in your, in your you know, in English, uh, its grammar, its spelling, its punctuation uh, and many aspects of uh, the, 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 the way the English is written. So proofreader is not simply somebody who is asked to read. So what happens is that he is the one person who will be able to see it with, uh, we call it as an eagle's eye. Why we call it as an eagle's eye is that at a glance he can catch a mistake. Just as how an eagle over a height of some, you know, maybe about 100 or 300 feet, it is able to, uh, you know, detect uh, a small earthworm, whereas if we are in that height, we can't even see it. But eagle has a special eye, a special eye, it's, it has an eye where it can catch the worm. So that is its food. So that's why we say the appropriator is expected to have an eagle's eye. Now, all of us, you should know that it's not only in proofreading, but in every profession, in fact, uh, you should be able to have a, an eagle's eye, a sharp eye, a focused eye, you are looking for mistakes and you are removing the mistakes. Uh, maybe when we, you know when we make uh, many machines or uh, you know devices, uh, there may be plus or minus error rating. Error rating can be plus or minus. We can always have. But please remember, in printing, when we are printing something, there is no provision for plus or minus. You have to be absolutely hundred percent. One small mistake can damage the reputation of your company, of your publication. What is this? These people can't even print something correctly. They will tell this, this, this company is worth it, 10 billion uh, okay, rupees. But what is this? Is this the publication? Here is a mistake. So the proofreading enables uh, you to ensure that there are no mistakes whatsoever uh, before actually you give green signal to go ahead with the printing. So proofreading is, is a task which is performed uh, after you finish the uh, uh, keyboarding the text. So this is what we have done and you see, and so there is, a, there is a particular methodology, a particular system by which you read the proof. 
And you know that in English we have many instances where uh, spellings are often confusing. Two spellings are correct, but you don't know which one to use. Like color, L C O L O R is correct. C O L O U R is correct. So you have a style to follow as a proofreader. So when you are reading a proof, you have to know what is the style that your organization is adopting. So your organization may say we will follow American style. Then everywhere they will use C O L O R. But your organization may say we will go by the English style. That is England or the UK people style. You may use C O L O U R. But you can't say that I will use at one place C O L O R and some other place C O L O U R. No, that is the reason why we have created one uh, a set of rules uh, of how you should use the spelling, of how, how you should go ahead with punctuation, what should be capitals, uh, what should be lower case, how do you show uh, everything else. So do we have? Please remember that in any organization, an organization is called as a house, and this house has a style. So X company is there, for example, Macmillan is there. Macmillan is one of the world's famous uh, publishing houses. Sir. So they have their own house style. Hindu newspaper has its own house style. So this house style is like a small book or a booklet where all the rules. That are to be followed by the newspaper are printed in this, and the editor and the proofreader keeps this by his side and ensures that uniformity is followed while detecting the mistakes. This is very important. So C O L O R may be correct the spelling, but at the same time you have to check not only correct but also whether it is in accordance with your style. Are you in your company using C O L O R or U R? So you'll have to check if you're not you're following UK style, then you'll have to make a correction. C O L O U R. So that is one of the areas where you have to be very careful as you go ahead with the task of proofreading. There's one more style known as work style. Normally, what happens uh, most of the times uh, we uh, follow a particular format, which is known as a portrait format. So this is a portrait for the cell phone is itself a portrait format. That is, this is long and this is short. So, but sometimes what happens? You're bringing out a special publication, a coffee table, or Ravi Varma's paintings, a special book, a paintings. You are not liking this format. At that time, you have turned the format. So, out of 100 publications, 99 publications, you have followed house style, where your format is this. But sometimes what happens? No, no. This is a publication where we will deviate from our house style. When you try to deviate as a special case, as a special a publication, specially brought out once in 20 years or once in 10 years, you bring out some format. Then you change the format to landscape. This is known as, you know, this is known as portrait, and this is known as landscape. So at that time, when you are deviating the, for that particular publication, for that particular work, we, we when we deviate from the thing, we call it as Work style. Otherwise, every proofreader will ensure that it is completely pertaining to what is known as house style. So please remember, for any traditional book publishing, newspapers, magazines, we have so many examples where uh, we follow house style. Sometimes we deviate, and when we deviate, it is known as work style. It all depends on the person who is asking such kind of a publication. Okay, maybe your boss is telling, chairman is telling, we'll bring out the coffee table this time and let it be landscape, flat. It will be a big uh, book this way, not this way. So please remember that is what is known as a portrait or a landscape. So this is the one dimension that you, you should always keep in mind as you go ahead. Now, how will you read it? Who will read it? How many people are required to do this task? So we have what is known as Two people involved in this task of uh, reading a proof. So proof is actually a specimen copy of what has already been typed. So I have typed, uh, suppose, uh, 10 pages. Then I take a printout of that. Of these 10 pages, I take a hard copy. Okay, we will tell you about soft copy corrections later. Hard copy is taken on a printer. So you have these 10 pages. And then from where did you type? 
you typed from the copy submitted by your uh, maybe customer or by your editor your editor and department has given you the copy then you have a copy that is the original and then you are checking one thing the print out of what has been typed so a person types up on, upon seeing the original and after his typing we take a hard copy and now we put this side by side the original the which has been supplied by your customer or say by the pro so then you have this also these two proof also then somebody compares these two things and theoretically speaking actually right from the beginning uh, when there was really no problem uh, in having manpower we used to involve two people for this particular task known as proofreading those two people are known as copy holder and proofreader as you can see in the slide copy holder so who is this person the name itself tells uh, copy holder he is the one who is holding the original uh, typed copy or manuscript copy or any hard copy supplied by your customer or supplied by the print buyer but suppose you are a pro and you are a print buyer when you are getting a publication done from a printing press you are a print buyer for instance okay so you supply the uh, original material to the printing press so what you supply that original material is known as copy so you now we have two people involved in this task of proofreading and one is that here is the person who holds the copy in his hands he holds the copy and then there is one more person sitting at front of him who is known as the proofreader so a slightly elevated uh, person in designation in salary in capabilities also now what is what is that these two people do so the first person is known as a copy holder as you can see in the slide i have shown it to you i have shared it in your share screen copy holder is the person who holds the copy proofreader is the person who holds the proof so proofreader is one who is having the proof in his hand copy holder has the original in his hands now these two people work in tandem and they synchronize the work in such a way that all mistakes are detected and not a single mistake is allowed to go in the copy so the copy holder he is a person somewhat like an assistant to a proofreader and so he reads the copy loudly distinctly uh, with a very correct pronunciation and uh, as demanded by the you know standards of that particular language in which he is reading and now he is doing it very uh, clearly there is a clarity in how he is reading it is allowed audible also to the uh, proofreader so you should not ask again and again i am now i am now no you should not it just the copy holder reads at a medium speed not too fast not too slow if it is too slow the proofreader will become impatient thunder do thunder do but if it is too fast and the thunder do that's why it's doodle kada vela do so the best way is to uh, synchronize that speed with the proofreader if the proofreader is comfortable with your speed you go with that speed only but don't trouble him by going too fast or too slow so when both of you uh, come to a sort of a, uh, a sort of an understanding with regard to the speed of reading the copy then really we are producing one of the best uh, publications so when you read this copy aloud you know or you know or follow it while the proof is read please remember you have to see uh, any deviations in the proof from the copy so the copy holder reads loudly and the proofreader listens to him and his eyes are there eagle eyes in the proof and he is able to check whether the 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 whether the text is correctly uh, produced or not it is only a proof a sample copy a specimen copy so he is the, the proofreader is the one that reads the copy or proof in order read the proof in order to find errors and mark correction sometimes even proofreader reads the copy also before type setting because the editorial department may also give sometimes mistakes in the original saying that it is no mistake sometimes that happens which experienced proofreader also so having said this 
always remember that we have what are the main tasks of this particular person what called as the proofreader who works in combination with a copy holder he ensure that there are no errors okay there are no letters in the wrong order sometimes letters are you know in quick typing in quick typing i can do one thing just you see i can do in quick typing i can do like this a s d instead of a and b so very quickly sometimes we do these mistakes so this is how we detect the mistakes and we ensure that uh, we are uh, so the first task is to see that and uh, whether the text and diagrams we also discussed in earlier classes uh, that in some places we use photographs or diagrams but what is the point of a wrong diagram coming at a right text so text is relevant text is talking about agriculture and your dying your drawing or diagram is showing about coal availability so there is no there is no relationship between the diagram and the text so you have to see whether the text is about agriculture and whether the diagram is also coinciding with the text aligning with the text related to the text so you have to ensure not simply reading the text but also ensure whether correct illustration is um, is there by the side of the relevant uh, text because sometimes in hurry these are wrongly also positioned either on the computer or maybe manually also when you are doing so please remember not only catching the mistakes but also now next 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 thing is you check whether the page numbers are in the right order 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what is there so that such a simple thing do we have to check yes we have to check because we have to check that because there is a possibility of uh, uh, the page numbers getting skipped or wrongly placed uh, in the in the process of uh, uh, production of uh, corporate publication and uh, the proof will also ensure whether house style has been followed or not whether hindu is there hindu house style followed or not and then chapter titles are matching the list of contents or not so when a book is being brought out he takes care of this particular thing also so there are the important area is that uh, there are no confusing words column or page breaks please remember that suppose in a newspaper i have columns and then at the same time i have some words which should not cause confusion i have col column or page breaks also so we have a column here we can have a page break how is the page breaking page break is normally you check the last word of the last line and then first word of the uh, next page so last word of the last line and the first word of the next page are they correctly transitioning is it correctly transitioning that is one of the best ways of checking that after one you have second page after two you have third page and also check whether the illustrations have the captions and uh, whether if they are related to the text suppose some photograph is there the news is about amit shah but you have the put put the photograph of ktr then something wrong has happened there so illustrations also you have to check it with the relevance like how i told you about diagrams and then that is how we do it with that particular thing so illustration have the right captions and whether they related to the text this is very essential for us so the proofreader is not simply checking the text aspects of it uh, is not simply checking the the uh, the positioning of the illustrations or diagrams at the relevant place appropriate place is also checking the continuity between the pages is also checking the page numbers is also checking whether the illustrations are having right caption caption is something illustration is something then there is a problem and whether the whole picture of the photograph is related to the text or not and also to check whether the layout is logical and attractive what is layout is how you place this elements like the headline like the illustration like the caption like the text like the sub headlines all these things are known as elements of the page and whether you have positioned this properly 
positioning of all this is we are laying out the texture and the illustration in such a way that it, it is attractive and it creates interest to the reader. So this is what we mean by that. Now, proofreading task is not just simply, you know, so you just detect the mistake and show. Actually, you should know that when you're reading the proof, after you finish your task, the proof goes to the, uh, to the operator at the machine who reads your proof. He is not in touch with you. You don't even know him. He doesn't know you, but you're reading the proof and giving him with some special symbols. So you are communicating to the person, to the operator through a standardized, internationally standardized proofreading symbol. So all over the world are universal in nature. So whether I am using one proofreading mark like Delhi, the delete symbol or the mark that I use is the same whether I am in New Jersey or New Zealand. So please remember it has it is universal all over the world. Anybody should be able to understand the proof reading marks that you, you have used. Like how you remember we used to have shorthand. So shorthand is universal. Everybody understands that. It has nothing to do with your country, religion, region, age, all those things. It is a common standard universal language that we use like so these are all symbols or codes that we use to detect to detect the mistakes to tell what needs to be done so you don't have to call pick up your phone and sir i am operator speaking he cannot say that because the proofreader is uh, is supposed uh, to is supposed to be an expert in uh, what is known as these proofreading symbols or special marks uh, that are used uh, while reading the proof. So as he reads the proof, you know, there is the length of the line here. As you see here, for instance, we have this length of the line here. And if you take in the center of this, then there is a left side, you will have margin. Okay, as you see here, for instance, there is a margin here, there is a margin on the right side also. So the proofreader makes use of these margins to indicate the mistake uh, as he is reading. So there is, for instance, a mistake here. Uh, instead of one S, there are two S have come. So I have to indicate this correction. So how do I indicate? So what he does is that he pinpoints that with a stroke on the letter S, a very light stroke on the letter S in the text. So that is known as text mark or textual mark. So what I put a cross line over the letter, but the letter also should be visible because the operator should know what was actually wrong typed. So you don't have to completely close that. You are not done any sin or a murder. Okay, you are not, you just put one slight stroke on the letter yes. And then at the same time in the margin, in the margin, you will be using one proofreading symbol called as delete. We will try to see some of the marks in the presentation as we go along. So that indicates that the operator will immediately automatically know that this needs to be removed. So it can be any small thing. It can be a thing like this or there is a space. So this it can also be indicated. I close from the top, close from the bottom and I can indicate here like close. So we can also do so many corrections that can be done in the hard copy. Every correction is carried out by the operator without even consulting the person that is the proofreader. So proofreader and operator don't talk, but the symbols talk. Symbols connect the proofreader with the operator. No, there should be no confusion. There will be no confusion as long as you're performing the proofreading task by using the standard marks that are available universally. So we'll have to ensure that this is there. Both a, a mark is used in the text known as text mark. And when a mark is used in the margins, this margin that is known as marginal marks. So two kinds of marks are used by the proofreader. One is the text, which indicates the location of the mistake. So there is a mistake that indicates the location of the mistake. So if the, I use a text mark or I use one letter S here and I put one stroke, that is known as text mark, which tells the location of the mistake. 
And the same thing I use one mark here and in the margin telling that this should be removed. So I put one symbol here that indicates that the concerned text mark can be attended to by seeing the marginal mark. The mark that we use in the margin and the mark that I use in the text both, uh, you know, merge. So on that basis, the operator removes that and we understood uh, what exactly was asked by the proofreader. So like that, this is how it is read. Various marks are used, the mark in the margin, along with specific details. Uh, so the mark that you use in the margin is to uh, let the uh, operator know the kind of correction that is supposed to be added. So is it uh, something like, for instance, I am here, for instance. So I put in the margin, here I put one stroke on the letter E, and then here in the margin I put the letter A, which means the operator will remove the letter A, E, and then he will put the letter A. It is indicated in the margin letter A, and here I indicated there's a mistake here. So the operator removes this letter. Instead, he types another letter in place of E, he types a letter A. So this is how it happens. So uh, by uh, proper linking of the uh, textual mark with the marginal mark, proofreading can go smoothly and successfully. This is how it should be. And uh, very carefully, these.
all of the, uh, yeah good morning i'm sorry that there was a power cut and by the time i wanted to join but through hotspot bluetooth and all that uh, by the time again current came so there was a slight dislocation about 5 minutes uh, uh, for me because of which let me once again um, uh, share the screen uh, because you might have lost it also uh, can anyone unmute and tell me whether you are able to listen to me now the current has come here can bargo unmute and talk or 2571 can you please talk are you able to hear me i hope you are able to hear me yes sir yeah thank you very much right okay so i will now present to you the yeah let me see whether i'm able to present to you uh, okay yeah yes now i have got the share so we were discussing about that uh, i hope you are able to see the screen are you able to see the screen uh, can you say yes or no can you please yes, someone confirm yeah yes. very good so you are able to see this uh, and i was telling you that we use special marks for this we use a text mark and marginal mark normally the proofs are divided up in just that ante in left side lo it is in your page lo left half or second right half untundi suppose let us assume idi left half anukunda ikka nunchi ikkada daka left half anukunda adhe letter kinda nenu chustan suppose ikka nunchi ikkada daka right half anukunda సో లెఫ్ట్ హాఫ్ లో ఉన్న మిస్టేక్స్ అన్ని ఓకే ఈ లెఫ్ట్ మార్జిన్ లో వాడతాం మనం ఇదే క్రమంలో సో ఇక్కడ ఒక మిస్టేక్ ఉంటే ఫస్ట్ ఇక్కడ వేసేస్తాం ఇక్కడ మిస్టేక్ ఉంటే ఇక్కడ వేస్తాం ఇక్కడ మిస్టేక్ ఉంటే ఇక్కడ దగ్గరికి వేస్తాం సో అన్ని ఇక్కడ ఇండికేట్ చేస్తాం సపోజ్ ఇక్కడ ఈ ఈ హాఫ్ లో ఉన్న మిస్టేక్స్ సపోజ్ ఈ హాఫ్ లో ఉన్నాయి అనుకోండి సో సారీ ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఇన్ దిస్ రైట్ హాఫ్ దెన్ యూ విల్ స్టార్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ హియర్ దిస్ ఫస్ట్ మిస్టేక్ హియర్ సెకండ్ మిస్టేక్ హియర్ థర్డ్ మిస్టేక్ లైక్ దిస్ we use both the left side margin and the right side margin to put the mark which we call it as marginal mark and we use both left side and right side please remember that in any proof uh, actually it like let us say oka a4 page iskunna oka proof chaustunnaru so normal ga any mistakes ostai okati ara mistakes e ostai maximum of four or five ostai ప్రతి లైన్ లో పేజ్ మొత్తానికి ఫోర్ ఆర్ ఫైవ్ మిస్టేక్స్ రావాలి ప్రతి లైన్ లో నాలుగైదు మిస్టేక్స్ వచ్చాయి అంటే అర్థం ఏంటంటే యూ హ్యావ్ టు రిమూవ్ ది ఆపరేటర్ ది ఆపరేటర్ ఈస్ నాట్ ప్రాపర్లీ టైపింగ్ సో మెనీ మిస్టేక్స్ విల్ అగైన్ స్లో డౌన్ ది ప్రొడక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది పబ్లికేషన్ సో ఏదర్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు టెల్ ద ఆపరేటర్ టు చేంజ్ టు సీ దట్ హీ ఈస్ ఏబుల్ టు టైప్ కరెక్ట్లీ not so many mistake one can tolerate the four or five mistake in one a4 page so by and large you don't have to use the entire thing matlab baad kala rojul lo ante technology vera ga undedi manual ga chese vallu vallu illiterate people kuda pan chese vallu em undi original lo em undi ante ikkada e iskoni vallu pette vallu andulo kuda kon tappu chese vallu appu mistake ekku unde ikkada mistake chaala takku unnai because ipudu em ochindi ipudu artificial intelligence ochindi మనం తప్పులు కొట్టినా కూడా అది ఆటోమేటిక్ కరెక్ట్ గా చేసేస్తున్నది ఆటోమేటిక్ గా ఒక్కోసారి మనం అండ్ కొడితే అది ఆటోమేటిక్ గా అండ్ చేసేస్తుంది మనం తప్పు కొట్టినా అది కరెక్ట్ చేసేస్తున్నది కొన్ని అలా అని చెప్పి మీరు టెక్నాలజీకి బానిసలు అవ్వకూడదు యూ షుడ్ నాట్ బి స్లేవ్స్ టు టెక్నాలజీ అవర్ మాన్యువల్ ఇంటర్వెన్షన్ ఈస్ ఆల్వేస్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఈస్ ఆల్వేస్ ఎసెన్షియల్ సో నౌ వీ యూజ్ దిస్ మార్క్స్ ఆన్ ద మార్జిన్ అండ్ ఆల్సో ఇన్ ది టెక్స్ట్ now after that we will see here now what we mean by this marks now you can see here uh, the marks for even minute maybe i think i can try to zoom it a bit let me see if i can zoom yeah okay i'll increase it i don't know whether i'm able to zoom it no we cannot zoom more than 100% because i cannot uh, uh manipulate it. so if you see some of the marks to delete so the word delete means removing a letter you can use this symbol there is a symbol here so this symbol or proofreading mark is used in the margin so in the text we put a slight stroke on the letter which you want to delete so oka aksharam delete cheyali aksharam meed oka sanna geetha gistam tappu aksharam kuda kanapadali ఆర్ ఒక వర్డ్ మొత్తం మార్చేయాలి వర్డ్ ఏ ఉండకూడదు అక్కడ డబల్ డబల్ పట్టది ఓకే సపోజ్ ఇక్కడ ఉంది అనుకోండి ఇక్కడ 
ఫాలోస్ ఫాలోస్ అనిపించదు అప్పుడు ఈ వర్డ్ మొత్తం మీద నుంచి ఒక గీత గీస్తాం అడ్డంగా వెనక ఉన్న అక్షరాలు కూడా కనపడాలి మనకి మొత్తం దాన్ని మసిపోయక్కర్లేదు మీరు అది మీరు ఏమంత పెద్ద కర్మ మర్డర్ చేయలేదు యూ ఆర్ ఓన్లీ ట్రైంగ్ టు పుట్ దట్ దట్ ప్రూఫ్ రీడర్ కరెక్షన్ చేసేవాడికి ఏం తప్పు జరిగింది అని కూడా తెలియాలి సో దట్ ద రీజన్ వై వీ వీ హ్యావ్ దట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఎ సిచ్యువేషన్ సో సెవరల్ ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ మార్క్స్ అదే మరి ఇవన్నీ బట్టి బట్టాలా ఎట్లా ఇవన్నీ ఎక్కడ ఎప్పుడు జ్ఞాపకం పెట్టుకోవాలి ఇన్ని మార్క్స్ ఉన్నాయి ఇవన్నీ ఏం అవసరం లేదు మీరు ఇవి ప్రాక్టీస్ చేస్తే ఎక్కడైనా మీరు ఎనీథింగ్ మీకు చేతిలోకి ఏ ప్రింటెడ్ పేజ్ వచ్చినా మీరు గట్టిగా చదివితే మీకు ఏదో ఒక రకమైన మిస్టేక్ ఇవన్నీ కూడా మీకు కనపడుతూ ఉంటాయి ఇప్పుడు ఇప్పుడు ప్రజెంట్ డే పబ్లికేషన్స్ లో అన్ఫార్చునేట్లీ టెక్నాలజీ ఇంత ఉన్న తర్వాత కూడా మిస్టేక్స్ ఎక్కువ అవుతున్నాయి తక్కువ అవట్లేదు నాకు అదే ఆశ్చర్యం వేస్తుంది మేము చదువుకున్న రోజుల్లో మేము వాడిన రోజుల్లో టెక్నాలజీని మిస్టేక్స్ అతి తక్కువగా ఉండేవి ఇప్పుడేమో ఇంత బాగా ఉన్న తర్వాత కూడా మిస్టేక్స్ ఎందుకు అవుతున్నాయి ఇది కూడా ఒక పెద్ద యాక్చువల్ గా రీసెర్చ్ జరుగుతున్నది ఏంటి ఎక్కడ లోపం ఉంది టెక్నాలజీలోనా మనిషిలోనా ఇద్దరు కలిసా సో వీ ఆర్ ఏబుల్ టు హ్యావ్ దట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఎ సిచ్యువేషన్ నైన్టీన్ సెవెంటీ ఫైవ్ నుంచి నైన్టీన్ ఎయిటీ ఫైవ్ నైన్టీ వరకు నైన్టీ సిక్స్ నైన్టీ సెవెన్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ టూ థౌజండ్ వరకు నేను మిస్టేక్స్ చూసేవాడిని కాదు హిందూలో ఆ తర్వాత హిందూ అనే అంత పెద్ద ప్రఖ్యాతంగా వచ్చిన పేపర్లు కూడా మిస్టేక్స్ స్టార్టెడ్ అపియరింగ్ అదేంటి అప్పుడు అంత మాన్యువల్ గా ఉన్నది అంత అవుట్డేటెడ్ టెక్నాలజీ ఉన్నప్పుడు ప్రతి అంత సూక్ష్మంగా చూసి ఒక్క మిస్టేక్ లేకుండా ఉండేది ఇప్పుడు ఏంటి ఇంత టెక్నాలజీ వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఇలా అవుతుంది బికాస్ వీ ఆర్ నౌ హ్యావింగ్ ఎ ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఇన్ ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ లో అందరు చాలా మంది అనుకుంటారు వై షుడ్ ఐ డూ ద ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ వెన్ ఐ హ్యావ్ వాట్ ఈస్ నోన్ యాజ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ నో వెన్ యూ హ్యావ్ వాట్ ఈస్ నోన్ యాజ్ ఐ లెట్ మీ పుట్ ఇట్ హియర్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూఆర్ సీ వీ ఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ హలో వీ ఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ వాట్ ఈస్ నోన్ యాజ్ స్పెల్ చెక్ ఆ స్పెల్ చెక్ ఉంది కదా అది మిస్టేక్ పట్టేస్తుంది కదా దిస్ ఈస్ వన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ చాలా మంది పిఆర్ఓస్ అంతా ఇక్కడే పప్పులో కాలేస్తారు ఇయర్ ఇస్ ద ప్లేస్ వేర్ ది కమిట్ ఎ బిగ్గెస్ట్ మిస్టేక్ ఆఫ్ దేర్ కెరీర్ డు నాట్ బికమ్ ఎ స్లేవ్ ఆఫ్ స్పెల్ చెక్ డు నాట్ టోటల్లీ డిపెండ్ ఆన్ స్పెల్ చెక్ లెట్ మీ టెల్ యూ వన్ థింగ్ సపోజ్ యు ఆర్ రీడింగ్ అండ్ సపోజ్ దెర్ ఇస్ ఎ వర్డ్ స్పెల్ చెక్ ఏం చేస్తుంది డిక్షనరీలో ఉన్న వర్డ్స్ లో ఒక తప్పు ఉంటే అది చేస్తుంది ఓకే సపోజ్ ఇది ఉంది అనుకోండి స్పెల్ చెక్ ఇక్కడ ఇక్కడ పడుతుంది ఇక్కడ ఏదో మనం చెప్తుంది మీరు ఏం వర్డ్ కావాలి ఇక్కడ సో ఇక్కడ చూపిస్తుంది అది రెడ్ 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 అండర్లైన్ తో చూపిస్తుంది అదే మీరు ఇది కొట్టారు స్పెల్ చెక్ ఏం చూపి దేర్ అనే వర్డ్ ఉంది డిక్షనరీలో బట్ యాక్చువల్ గా మీకు అక్కడ దేర్ కాదు కావాల్సింది మీరు మీకు అక్కడ యాక్చువల్ గా దేర్ కాదు కావాల్సింది మీకు కావాల్సింది ఏంటి సపోజ్ మీకు కావాల్సింది ఒక నిమిషం సో హియర్ మీకు యాక్చువల్ గా కావాల్సిన వర్డ్ ఏమో సో ఇది ఇప్పుడు ఇది ఎట్లా వీల్ అవుతుంది మరి స్పెల్ చెక్ ఇమీడియట్ గా అప్పుడు గ్రామర్ చూపిస్తుంది గ్రామర్ మిస్టేక్ వచ్చింది అంటుంది సో ఈ గ్రీన్ చూపిస్తుంది సో మిస్టేక్ అనేది కంపల్సరీగా ఉంటుంది సో యూ హ్యావ్ టు చెక్ తరోలీ సో ప్లీజ్ రిమెంబర్ స్పెల్ చెక్ విల్ నాట్ టెల్ యూ సపోజ్ బై మిస్టేక్ యూ టైమ్ అక్టోబర్ త్రీ యాజ్ గాంధీజీస్ బర్త్డే బట్ యూ నో వెరీ వెల్ దర్ అక్టోబర్ టూ ఈజ్ గాంధీజీస్ బర్త్డే బట్ స్పెల్ చెక్ డజన్ నో దట్ అక్టోబర్ టూ ఈజ్ ద యాక్చువల్ బర్త్డే సపోజ్ యూ హ్ లెఫ్ట్ ఇట్ హూ విల్ చెక్ అండ్ దెన్ బై మిస్టేక్ యూ పబ్లికేషన్ హెస్ గుడ్ మన్ బ్యూటిఫుల్ యు నో ఇన్ ఇంట్రిబ్యూట్ మహాత్మా గాంధీ ఆన్ హిస్ బర్త్డే అక్టోబర్ త్రీ సో అండ్ సో ఇయర్ బట్ దెన్ ఈ త్రీ ఎలా వచ్చింది దట్ ఇస్ ద బిగ్గెస్ట్ మిస్టేక్ విచ్ యూ మైట్ ఇగ్నోర్డ్ బికాస్ యూ ఆర్ డిపెండింగ్ ఆన్ స్పెల్ చెక్ ఐ హోప్ నౌ యూ ఆర్ కన్విన్స్డ్ దట్ ఆల్వేస్ రిమెంబర్ దట్ అట్లీస్ట్ వన్స్ వన్ రీడింగ్ మాన్యువల్లీ ఈ ఎ మస్ట్ ఈవెన్ ఇన్ ద ప్రెసెంట్ డేస్ ఇన్ ఆర్ యో సో దో ఎవ్రీబడి సేల్స్ ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ అవసరం లేదు ప్లీజ్ రిమెంబర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ మస్ట్ అయితే నౌ యూ మే సే అసలు ఎవరున్నారు చదివేవాళ్ళు చదివిన తర్వాత మిస్టేక్స్ పట్టేవాళ్ళు ఎవరు ఉంటారు ఎవడైనా ఒక్కడు ఉంటే చాలు మనకి ఎవడైనా ఒక్కడు ఉంటే కూడా చాలు సో వీ ఆల్వేస్ రిమెంబర్ ఒక్క ఉప్పు గిన్ ఒక్క ఉప్పు రవ్వ
ప్రతి పేజీలో అన్ని మిస్టేక్స్ వస్తున్నాయి ఏంటండి అవునా ఏంటి అని చెప్పి మార్క్ చేసి పంపిస్తాడు సో ప్లీజ్ రిమెంబర్ ఇట్ టర్న్స్ అపాన్ ద రెప్యుటేషన్ అది కాకుండా దీని యొక్క ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఏంటి అంటే మనం ఎందుకు డిక్షనరీ మీద ఆధారపడతాం డిక్షనరీలో సపోజ్ ఒక నేను మిస్టేక్ ప్రింట్ అయింది అనుకుందాం ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ సరిగ్గా చేయలేదు అనుకుందాం మనం డిక్షనరీ మీద ఎందుకు ఆధారపడతాం స్పెల్లింగ్స్ కరెక్ట్ స్పెల్లింగ్ కోసం ఆధార అదే డిక్షనరీలో తప్పులు ఉంటే వాట్ ఈస్ ద డ్యామేజ్ ఇట్ కెన్ కాజ్ టు ది ఎంటైర్ వరల్డ్ సిమిలర్లీ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ ఆల్సో ఆర్ లైక్ దట్ ప్లీజ్ రిమెంబర్ వెన్ వీ ఆర్ ప్రింటింగ్ ఇన్ ద టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ ఫర్ స్కూల్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఇఫ్ యూ సే ఏపిఎల్ఇ బదులు ఏపిఈఎల్ ఆపిల్ ఓకే ఇఫ్ యూ సపోజ్ టు ప్రింట్ లైక్ దిస్ అండ్ ఇట్ హస్ గోన్ ఇట్ హస్ ఎస్కేప్డ్ ది అటెన్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది పీపుల్ ఓకే ఇన్స్టెడ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ సో ఎవ్రీబడి విల్ థింక్ లెస్ సార్ మీ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లో ఏపిఈఎల్ పడ్డది అన్నట్టు అంటాడు వాట్ హి విల్ పుట్ ద బ్లేమ్ ఆన్ యూ సో యూ ప్లీజ్ రిమెంబర్ దట్ వెన్ యు నో పివి నర్సింహారావు అవర్ ప్రైమ్ మినిస్టర్ వాజ్ అన్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ మినిస్టర్ హీ వాజ్ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ ఫర్ బ్రింగింగ్ అవుట్ ది టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ ఇన్ టైమ్ అండ్ ఆల్ దట్ ఓకే so what he used to do was uh, at random he used to check the textbook school in textbooks the pitchkoni sadivevar ayana anni bhashalo ochu anni bhashallo ayana mistakes point out chesi back pampichadu education school education department ila mistake man textbooks lo print chesthe manam chese damage entho undo aalochinchara ani cheppi atanu pin point chese vadu so you please remember if you are printing say uh, it's, it's a textbooks Uh, okay say any books or any publication for that matter so, so please remember sometimes what happens uh, the manual checking if ignored can be very very dangerous for the uh, readers okay this is how we use the uh, symbols and i have discussed you discussed with you what is how style work style and we have okay now soft copy corrections ante ipudu ikkada undi ఇందులో నేను కంప్యూటర్ లోనే మీ ముందే కరెక్షన్స్ చేసేస్తే దాన్ని సాఫ్ట్ కాపీ కరెక్షన్స్ అంటారు సో బట్ దానికి నైపుణ్యం ఉండాలి కరెక్ట్ గా చేయాలి తప్పు చేసేటప్పుడు కరెక్ట్ చేసేటప్పుడు ఇంకో తప్పు చేయకూడదు దట్ ఈస్ వెరీ వెరీ ఎసెన్షియల్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ అస్ యూ షుడ్ నో సో ప్లీజ్ రిమెంబర్ దట్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు హ్యావ్ దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఎ సిచ్యువేషన్ సో ఇప్పుడు ఇక్కడ చూడండి ఇక్కడ ఇలా ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ చదివేది ఇలా సో హియర్ ఈస్ టేక్ ఇట్ అవుట్ ఐటీ తీసేయాలంటే ఐటీ మీద ఒక స్ట్రోక్ ఇలా కొడతాం ఈ స్ట్రోక్ ను అని టెక్స్ట్ మార్క్ అంటాము దీన్ని ఈ డెలీట్ అనే దాన్ని ఇదన్నా వాడతాం ఇదన్నా వాడతాం దీన్ని దీని ఇండికేషన్ ఏంటంటే ఇది ఇట్ ని తీసేసేయండి దట్ ఈస్ ద మీనింగ్ ఇప్పుడు ఇక్కడ చూడండి యాజ్ వన్ ఓ ఎన్ ఈ ఓ ఎన్ ఈ మధ్యలో స్పేస్ వచ్చింది ఆ రెండింటికి మధ్యలో స్పేస్ కలిపేయండి వాటి రెండింటిని క్లోజ్ అప్ అంటాం అదే సేమ్ మార్క్ ఇక్కడ వాడాం టెక్స్ట్ కూడా అదే మార్క్ మార్జిన్ కూడా అదే మార్క్ అంటే అతను తెలుసు ఇక్కడ స్పేస్ తీసేయాలి ఇక్కడ స్పేస్ అయితే చేయకపోగా మళ్ళీ కలపాలి కూడా క్లోజ్ సిఎల్ ఓఓఎస్సి సో ఇలా కొన్ని శాంపుల్స్ వచ్చాను మీకు నేను ఇది ఒకసారి చూసుకుంటే మీకు ఈజీగా అర్థమైపోతుంది సో స్పేస్ ఒక సింబుల్ ఉంటుంది ఇక్కడ ఏమైంది తొందరలో మీరు ఒక గీత గీస్తారు టెక్స్ట్ అప్పుడు తొందరలో గీత గీసినప్పుడు లేదు లేదు అది కరెక్ట్ గా లేదు నేనే తప్పు చేశాను అన్నప్పుడు కింద చుక్కలు పెట్టేసి అంటే లీవ్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ఇట్ ఈజ్ ఎస్టీఈటి లీవ్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అక్కడ తప్పేం లేదు నేనే ఏదో చదివేటప్పుడు ఒక గీత గీస్తే తప్పు ఉంది అనుకోని కానీ తర్వాత గ్రహించాను తప్పు లేదు దెన్ ఐఎమ్ పుట్టింగ్ దిస్ ఎస్టీఈటి సో దిస్ ఇస్ హౌ వీ చెక్ ది ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ మార్క్స్ అండ్ డోంట్ ఫర్గెట్ అబౌట్ హౌస్ స్టైల్ డోంట్ ఫర్గెట్ అబౌట్ వర్క్ స్టైల్ డోంట్ ఫర్గెట్ అబౌట్ వాట్ వీ కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ది సాఫ్ట్ కాపీ కరెక్షన్ సో హౌ డూ యూ క్యారీ అవుట్ కరెక్షన్స్ యూ నో వెన్ యూ గెట్ అన్ అటాచ్మెంట్ ఎనేబుల్ ఎడిటింగ్ అని వస్తుంది ఎనేబుల్ ఎడిటింగ్ లో అక్కడ మనం కరెక్షన్స్ కూడా చేసుకోవచ్చు వీ కెన్ డూ on the and the correction chase the copy in kuda mano save chesukochu this is how we make use of the thing and i have given you uh, what is the importance of proofreading in publication we discussed a lot about this and then uh, we also discussed to err is human okay is true but printers must be very human to forgive is divine so please remember nen eppudu press lo kelthunte student nannu ramman cheppe vaalku sir meer raavadu మీరు ఏదో ఒక మిస్టేక్ ఇప్పుడు పడతారు ప్రింట్ అయిన తర్వాత మిస్టేక్ పట్టకూడదు ప్రింట్ అవ్వక ముందే మిస్టేక్ పట్టాలి దట్ ఈస్ ద మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ డోంట్ ట్రై టు క్యాచ్ మిస్టేక్ ఆఫ్టర్ ప్రింటింగ్ దట్స్ అ బిగ్ ఫెయిల్యూర్ ఎనీ మిస్టేక్ యూ క్యాచ్ బిఫోర్ ప్రింటింగ్ సో దట్స్ ఆల్ ఫర్ దిస్ యూనిట్ టెన్ ఇట్ కాల్ డెస్ ప్రూఫ్ రీడింగ్ నో టైమ్ ఈస్ అబౌట్ లెవెన్ ఓ క్లాక్ ఐ లెట్ వైండ్ అప్ టు 
Yes. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, let me see whether I'm able to have this class. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think I will have any time for doubts. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you, sir. Are you already... Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I believe. Thank you so much. Yeah.